I've seen one Regent honey eater here in my life. They're symbolic of what we've done to the rest of the landscape. So if we could bring them back, that would be fantastic. The Regent honey eater is a beautiful, patterned, really unique bird. And they used to inhabit a huge range across Australia, all the way down from the east coast to Melbourne. And that habitat that they used to forage over is more or less disappeared from Australia due to industrial agriculture and, and land clearing that's associated with that. To save a bird like the region honey eater, which forages over such a huge area, also requires landscape scale responses. So the Bush for Birds project works over a really large area of northeast Victoria and ties in a wide range of partners in order to deliver it. The Bush for Birds project gave us the funds to purchase 200 trees to plant around the place. We plant a variety of understory species and some eucalypts as well. Hopefully in 20 years, that's going to be the key to getting swift parrot and regent honey eater back into the system. So much of the land is owned privately. So if these areas weren't maintained for conservation, it would just put a lot more pressure on the species that are just surviving in the national parks. And I think sustainability and productivity go hand in hand together. We're seeing more and more action taken by private landowners to do their bit, like Michael and like others that are in the Bush for Birds project to, to conserve species that are on the brink like the region. I don't think there's any way that we can ignore what's happening any longer. All these species declines, these systems that are just falling to pieces around us. The grassy woodlands as a whole, over 95% of those have been removed in this landscape and then over 80% of what's left is on private land. So it's really important that for sites like this that we're doing our bit to maintain these quality patches of vegetation. We've got 33 different landholders underneath the project that all have 10-year management agreements. We're putting on six new conservation covenants, all things that are basically aimed at maintaining quality remnant vegetation and trying to restore the habitat across the northeast. Whilst the regent and the swift parrot are the focal species of the project, all the woodland birds are going to benefit from the work that's being done, as well as you know, the mammals that rely on these systems, the reptiles that rely on these systems. You can do a lot of work to protect woodland areas and to rehabilitate the habitat, but if we don't have the birds around that can come back in, then there's something sad about that habitat. And, and I think we need to give our critically endangered birds like Regent honey eaters and swift parrots, we need to give them a chance to actually survive while we rehabilitate and rejuvenate the landscape. So BirdLife Australia has been involved in alleviating the threat that noisy miners create for those birds because noisy miners are very aggressive to other birds in their territory. So when you get this super abundance of noisy miners in an area, in a reduced area of habitat, they will just attack any other bird to drive it out of their territory. So we're looking at reducing noisy miner numbers in specific high value areas, and we've seen a benefit. On one of the properties that we were working, Regent honey eaters nested last year. Now in previous years at that site, the noisy miners would have just harassed those birds to the extent that we really seriously doubt that they would have been successful raising any chicks at all. What's really important is that we continue monitoring to know where the Regent honey eaters are turning up, where the swift parrots are, and then we can focus on those sites and keep the habitat in those areas as friendly for those species as possible. And if we can get anybody that's interested in birds while they're out doing the thing they enjoy to monitor what they're seeing, then we get a much better picture of where the birds are and what they're doing. Swamps, Rivers and Ranges has been involved with the Bush for Birds project through our survey program. So we have volunteers who go out into the environments that they love, record the birds that they enjoy seeing, so that we can see how bush birds are tracking, whether we're seeing declines, whether we're seeing years of boom, years of bust, and what's happening across the landscape. 
the other thing that long-term monitoring can give us is it can help inform our on-ground actions so that we can protect birds in the long term and we don't end up with more critically endangered species. And you give ownership back to the people who are living in the ecosystems because they know how the bush around them works. Region honey eaters really need habitat to help them survive and the more habitat, the better. Because they're stunning birds, they're beautiful. We've got National Park to the south and the north and we're part of that corridor and linkage. So with the Bush for Birds program, we've revegetated some open areas to keep that linkage going. The whole place is slowly but surely becoming revegetated and it's amazing when you stand in a spot like this and you look around and there's trees everywhere and you know that you actually brought that about. Because it's, it's a real contribution to Australia that people who own land like this can make. Personally, I've really enjoyed being involved in the Bush for Birds project. I've learned a lot about what you need to do to help the environment recover. And it's really impressed on me the need to, as a landowner, to do something meaningful. I haven't actually seen a Regent honey eater. I've read the stories of the days before colonisation when the flocks were so big that they would darken the sky. It's hard to believe that now, but I sort of take the view that anything you do for honey eaters is good for honey eaters. So there are lots and lots of other honey eaters that may not be endangered at the moment, but probably will be if we <laughs> don't get our skates on. It feels like a good legacy to, to hand on. Creating the situation for the flora and fauna to thrive. As part of the project, we planted 190 paddock trees and we also put in some fences to segregate out the regrowth areas from the other part of the farm. It's really positive and you know it's so important to be doing this. There's a huge amount of work to do and if um, a little bit of it can rub off then that's, that, that's great. Imagine being able to say we have swift parrots <laughs> and if we happen to get some region honey eaters too. <laughs> The Bush for Birds project has some pretty significant outcomes attached to it. Two and a half thousand hectares of land management agreements have been implemented and that includes 2,000 hectares of remnant vegetation protection. Also we've undertaken 250 hectares of revegetation and that includes putting 61,500 trees in the ground, 2,000 hectares of noisy minor control but it's really important that the gains that we've made so far as part of the project continue in the next five years, the next 10 years, the next 20 years. Without these actions, not just the region honey eater, but also the swift parrot is certainly going to disappear. And that's something that we must try and avoid at all costs. And I want them to be there for my kids as well. I want my kids to be able to look up in the trees and see those birds being part of the landscape.